Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon, and today we are discussing 10 signs that you may have a love for money. The scriptures tell us in 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning around verse 8, Paul wrote a letter to the church of Ephesus to the young pastor, Timothy, and he discussed this. He discussed that contentment with godliness is great gain, but the love of money is the root of all evil. Now we know, friends, we need money. We need money to exchange. We need money for ministry when it comes to administration. We don't need money to preach, to exhort, to prophesy, to give edification and comfort. That's not what you need money for. But if you're in ministry, you do need money. Even for you to write a book, for you to to share uh, different things to edify the body, you need the currency to exchange to get those things. If you have a family, you ha- you need money to pay your bills. You need money for the utilities, for your car, for gas to put in your car. You need money for clothes. You need it for food. You need money. Friends, money is necessary. It is the currency to exchange. So let us look at where we may need to calibrate and really look at our hearts, examine our hearts. These are 10 things. They are in no particular order. And we know that money can corrupt a minister. It can corrupt us. Those of us that's in the harvest must constantly check our own motives and hearts before the Lord that we know where we stand about money. But let us make no mistake, friends. If you don't have no money. It's gonna, it's going to affect you. You can end up homeless. You can end up out on the street. You can end up with serious problems when you can't pay your bills because you don't have any money. So let, let's be reasonable and let us understand when we're crossing the line. Number one, people who love money. And remember, these are in no particular order. But I want you to consider your attitude towards the poor. People who tend to do well and have a nice little penny save have a tendency to look down and scoff at the poor. And one way you scoff at the poor is you don't help. You sit by with all that money in the bank hoarding and you do not make any attempt to help those who are less fortunate than you. When you have an unsatiable obsession with becoming rich, this is all you think about is how to get rich. And usually a person who is a, is is prone to an unhealthy love for money, they will do any quick scheme to get it. Number three, you do not, it's like number one, you do not help others. You call yourself a follower of Christ. You call yourself spiritual. That's the new fad. Everybody's spiritual now. (laughs) But you got to understand, friends, that the greatest expression of love is being a giver. We look for ways to be like our Heavenly Father. For God so loved the world, He gave. When you are um stingy my friends you just you're just stingy you don't want to help anybody you're just stingy 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 oh that love that unhealthy love is there for the money because you want to hoard it and keep it all to yourself and build barns like the man did that God required his life as he kept wanting to build barns number four you are constantly guarding your money. You are the one that will go cray cray if you can't add up your expenses and balance your checkbook for three pennies. Oh friend, you some wrong with that picture and you can't sleep. You start arguing with your mate. You're you're constantly policing the money. Friends, you got to take a look at that. You got to take a look at it. You cause strife with those who you are in covenant with. I'm talking about a spouse, a business partner. You are just constantly overprotective. Listen, you're more protective about your money than you are your walk with God. 
You are more protective about your money than you are how you're treating others. You're more protective about the money than you are your attitude and how you interact with people. You are so busy checking that bank account, but you ignore all of the more weightier matters in your life. Now, I'm usually terrible uh, terrible about keeping up with numbers. So the next one is <laughs> you are a show off. You live outside your means to impress other people. You will actually, friends, give up living a comfortable, content life just to show off what you have. You live to show it off. You can't wait for some new visitors to come so you can give them a quick tour of your closet, how much you pay for all of your designer wares, how much you pay for your car. You, you just, you're, you're bound by the pride of your life. That's the love of money. It's the root there. Number, uh, no numbers. Let me just speak them out. You live beyond your means. And that's where the show off comes because they're showing off their lavish living. You look down on others who do not have designer uh, uh, um, things or cars, clothes. Everything has to be opulent, friends. That root is there. That root. Because for those who love money, they equate money to power. That's why they have to have the best of the best of everything because the root is the love of money. And that money to them, I, I got to say it again, it equates power to them. And it is idolatry, my friends. You're discontented. You can't find contentment. There's never enough for you. There's never enough. You got to keep on getting more and more and more for who? Nobody but you. You will take all your extra money and spend it on a vacation. You'll spend it on more shopping sprees instead of looking for others that you could help. It's just more, more, more. Never, ever is it enough. When you have a love for money, you will begin to manipulate others to get ahead. You will do business deals and transactions that are unscrupulous because you want that money. You will throw your coworkers under the bus. Oh, yes, friend, when you got that root working in you, you'll throw your coworkers under the bus because you think that as you throw them under the bus, you will get the promotion because the promotion will bring you what? More money and power. So you, my friend, are very manipulative, very manipulative. You will, my friend, disregard the standards of God. This is last but not least. You will disregard the standards of God to pay your bills, to get money. And this is where women, mostly women, prostitute themselves. They will sleep with a man to get the bills paid. They'll sleep with a man to get a pair of red bottom shoes. They'll sleep with a man to go to a concert. Oh, yes, friends. Just to go to a concert, you'll sleep with some. You will disregard living holy and righteous before the Lord because you want financial security. And you will say, God knows my heart. That's why you won't get rid of those booty calls. They call them booty calls, friends. They steal that. You got all these ungodly men and women in your phone because when money tight, you will do what is not right. This is the love. This is the root. It causes us to fall into darkness, my friend. It is better to sleep outside, be homeless, than to keep violating your conscience, which is where God, he speaks to us. He comforts us, comforts us in our spirit and our conscience. You violate walking in the spirit to get money. 
Some of you are living with lovers that you claim you no longer have sex with them, but they were your lovers and you moved in with them, but you live with them. You disregard running from the very appearance of evil, abstaining from it. You'll stay in those relationships. Why? To get money. Instead of going back home, yeah, you might be 40 or 50, brother, but you was living with that woman. Now you're trying to do right in the sight of God, but you stay with her for the money. That's the root, friends, the root, the love of money, the root, the root of all evil. It is evil, friends, to use men and women to get ahead for the money. And Here's a bonus. When you or I disregard our children, those who we have been given management over, you disregard them chasing the money. Oh, friends, any of us but for the grace of God, we must constantly all calibrate our hearts. Do not ignore your children, friends. I know money could be tight. I was there where I worked two jobs. I was constantly trying to keep balance so I could take care of my children. I know what it's like to be a single parent. I know what it's like to have to one day make a decision to to leave someone that you love because they are constant chronic cheaters. And you have to take a leap of faith to walk away. Better to do that than to stay for the money and go crazy. Idolatry is sneaky, my friends. So let us all calibrate and ponder the words of Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 6. It's a very powerful chapter, my friends. Very powerful. And nothing's worse than anyone who uses scripture to manipulate you out of your money. That is the root of the love of money. When anyone tells you to sow into their ministry and God is going to bless you, give to them and God's going to bless you. Sow your seeds for your needs. This is the root of the love of money. It is the manipulation of scripture to gain financially to use prophecy as a means to get money. When you see these people all on YouTube getting paid, they tell you to donate so that you can receive a prophecy or they don't even call it a donation, a love gift so that they can prophesy to you. Friends, that root, that love of money is right there. The spirit of Balaam prophesies for money. He will come and give you, quote, a word for money. He will tell you he comes to prophesy. Friend or she will tell you the same. God bless us all, my friends. The love of money is the root of all evil. And this is a fact. Let us ponder these things till next time, my friends. God bless us all.